I ain't even see you there. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of AT Tech. Of course, I'm your host, Andrew T. Today we're here to talk about mobile OS. It has come to my attention that some people, maybe even most people, don't understand the true power that lies in these little or be it sometimes big devices we call smartphones. These are not just phones that are smart. Your smartphone has been engineered by millions of people around the globe to help ease your life. Now let's take full advantage of it. I realized that there are a lot of people out there who don't really understand, know, and or really care to know what their smartphone really is capable of. And I say this because I've met several people who call me, text me, and or ask me questions that honestly their smartphone can handle for them. And I look at it like this. If you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you teach a man a fish, well, if you know the rest, you can finish it. But I'm trying to teach everybody right now how to fish. That's the goal. We want people to know how to fish. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna focus on growing the knowledge here of how to use a smartphone what apps are great to have on your smartphone and just all around i want to put you in the 21st century with your smartphone this is the world that we are living in now unfortunately everything's going digital and it's only gonna grow so right here right now at tech wants you whoever you are to be up to date with your technology. Today we'll start with platforms. So any mobile operating system will be our, at least the major mobile operating systems will be our platforms of choice. Mobile operating system combine features of a personal computer system with other features useful for mobile or handheld use usually including most of the following considering essentials is modern mobile system a touch screen cellular bluetooth wi-fi gps mobile navigation camera video camera speech recognition voice recorder music player near field communication and of course a ir blaster also known as an infrared blaster now, our current mobile operating system that we're gonna go through and kind of dissect a little, uh, bear in mind on a future episode, we'll go in more details into these OSs, but right now I just wanna give you the basics so you understand what you're dealing with. Our current mobile OSs that we're gonna talk about are Android, Windows Phone, BlackBerry OS, and iOS. Technically speaking, there are a lot of differences between these OSs. If we went into the technical, the legitimately technical differences between each OS, I included a Wikipedia link for that. You can see we would be here all day long. So we're gonna just stick with the basics for now. Android phones are designed by some of the best electronic companies around. And I'm talking about not just here in the United States, I mean around the globe. Samsung, LG, Motorola, HTC. Those are just some, not small names, but those are just a few names to start with. Those people know these companies around the globe and they're all designers of Android phones. You could imagine some of the best technology in the world are in Android phones and they all, all vary. One of the best benefits to this is you have a variety of phones to choose from that also varies in price and hardware. So you have a plethora, a plethora of phones in 
and the range of prices start from about free. I'm pretty sure if you can find it, but you're gonna probably incorporate a contract or some kind of leasing deal. I'm pretty sure you can find an Android phone as cheap as free, all the way up to the premium iPhone prices. And I'm talking about eight, nine hundred to a thousand dollars. Another benefit to Android are app prices. They tend to be lower than most of their competitors. Not to mention, they were the first platform to move to phablets as well as NFC. Now, of course, with the pros, you have some cons. Simply put, the vision within the Android world leads to hardware and software complications and delays. Another major con, the Google Play Store tends to be a little liberal with app submissions, which leads to more software hiccups. Windows and Blackberry are kind of in a similar situation. They're in a game of playing catch up. If you remember or were around then, there was a time when Blackberry and Windows were one of the leaders, I mean, honest to goodness leaders when it came to the smartphone trend. But this was before as Steve Jobs put it, they were truly smart. Windows, in my opinion, since making some internal changes, have been moving in the perfect direction for growth. And honestly, had they made this move sooner, if not from the beginning of the true smartphone trend, they would be a real top competitor on this list right now. Cortana, which will soon be available on all major platforms, is one of the prime examples of perfect direction. Microsoft decided to take an AI from one of their top selling franchise, Halo, and add it to their mobile OSs as an AI companion to your phone. And it's also coming to the computer platform with uh, Windows 10, just for those that didn't know. Cortana is your personal assistant, and with Windows 10, your computer platform as well. Out of Apple Siri, Google's OK Google, or Google Now, and Amazon's Alexa, Cortana is honestly the best one. I'm sorry guys, unfortunately, I don't have the major devices I wanted to have to show everybody, but on the episodes where I do more details on the OSs, I'll have a, if not a dummy phone, uh, actual phone of that platform with me to play around with in front of you and give you live examples. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have that today. As for BlackBerry, you know, recently one of their executives tried to make a proposal that app designers would have to make apps for all platforms and not just the one of their choosing. Which goes to show BlackBerry doesn't care about app designers at all. Let me explain. App designers target a specific market of people when they design an app. With that in mind, if that market doesn't live on the mobile OS they're aiming for, then fuck simple economics at least, and I'm pretty sure BlackBerry, being that they were at the top of the game and not at the bottom, they should understand this, at least financially. iOS, my personal favorite mobile OS, and there are a plethora of reasons why it's my favorite. I know I love the word plethora, don't get mad at me. iOS is essentially the opposite of Android, or well, honestly, it's arguable that they were the opposite of Android because the new direction they've been moving in is kind of wow. This one company handles both hardware and software. They believe in a uniform system. Their idea of a personal experience within the world of Apple does not consist of you being able to personalize your setup, meaning the look, the feel, the operation of how the iPhone 
and all the iOS devices work are very, very uniform. Now, there are pros and cons all over that. One, if you're the type of person that likes to stand out, of course, that's not, this is not for you. Standing out is not what Apple's about on the inside. Standing out on the outside is what they're about. They cost a lot. That is essentially the major, if you haven't reached a negative point with Apple, with what I've been saying so far, this is it. They're expensive. They're not, oh my God, this is the end of my wallet expensive, except if you get that gold watch, if you get that gold watch, oh my God, you, they wanna be that premium experience for that premium cost. All right, this again, as I said, is just a basic overview of each platform, but personally speaking, I think of all the OS's as an equal. You have to give and take on all the platforms in one form or another. And honestly, if you're trying to make a decision on which one to go with, I think it should come down to two choices or two ideas or two basics about them. And these are the major two things that you should consider. You choose the platform you are most comfortable with. Because now, with all the new integrations, everything's open. Everything's almost the same. With that being said, your first option is go with the platform you're most comfortable on, or this one is only if you can afford it, you want it, or this is just a better way for you to go. This is the best way for anybody that's completely undecisive. Get them all. You could just mix and match. There's plenty of combinations that you can choose from. But if you're undecisive, that's what I would say. Go with all of them. But this is truly if you, you know, you're really undecisive and you don't know. But if you have an idea of a platform that you're already familiar with and you like, I'd say go with them. You know, you could always do independent research or stay tuned for my future episodes and I'll give you more details and maybe you can make a more informed choice. Everything is interchangeable. There's so many apps out there that can help you from one platform to the next. It's silly not to get something you're com comfortable with. That's just my personal opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own. Next week, we'll go more in depth about smartphones, smartphone computing. In the meantime, tell us What's your platform of choice and why? Thank you for watching this video. As always, check the description box of every video we do here at AT Tech. We provide links containing more information about whatever our video subject matter was for that day. We have more information in the description box below on that matter. Also, don't forget to subscribe to AT Tech. Remember, the first 50 subscribers will be entered for a chance to win a free tech giveaway from AT Tech. Ding. Have a good one, folks. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you again for another episode of AT Tech.